Yeah, what is this? Oh, it's a dipstick. Holy sh! If we put this in the cabin, you can adjust it on the fly. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Zero to 60. And it's another episode on the 8HP swapped E46 single turbo build. Now this car is, it's a bit of a Frankenstein. Dan's been playing with it, the concept. He's had the N54 in for over a year and there is a full series on it on the channel. I will put a link to the playlist just below. And if you've got any questions about how it's all come together, just let us know in the comments. But the main point of this video is we're still working on the 8HP swap. That is the automatic transmission going in well, it's essentially a drift car. This episode is going to be on two key parts that Dan wanted to do for this setup. The first one is the dipstick. Yes, it's an N54 with a real manual dipstick. And the second part is trying to make a clutch pedal work with an automatic. So we'll get into that shortly. Dan, this has only just gone on yesterday. Can yep. you tell me why you do this? If you, anyone who's ever had an N54-powered car, the electronic dipstick is not very good. It takes about an hour to tell you if you've got any oil in your car, and by then it's probably too late, and uh, they fail all the time. And obviously in this, it's engine swap, so I don't have the screen that tells me how much oil's in it anyway, so we made this. Now, it's not just we made this. There is a good use for this. Now, Dan is aware of this being used by factory BMW race teams on some newer models that are also deleting the electronic dipstick. And again, it's, it's being able to check your oil in two seconds instead of two minutes when you come into the pits and to be honest if you're running a high performance engine you're changing your oil frequently more frequently than every million kilometers like bmw recommend you want to be able to do this quickly and do it because with this you don't need to run the engine you just put the correct amount of oil in and then make sure it's set right yep. so what's actually going on inside this um it's basically a piece of billet that we've machined out um it fits where the factory oil level sensor fits in using the same three studs same nuts and there's a cavity in here the oil will flow across to here and go up this tube actually i know because i asked this off camera but why have you used such a big tube for a dipstick um so if the tube is small and you go to pull the dipstick out when the dipstick's touching the oil it will sort of run oil the whole way up the dipstick and then it makes it really annoying to check your oil you have to wipe it 10 or 20 times before you get a true reading if it's got a big cavity down here, all the oil tends to stay down the bottom. And it and doesn't wick up the dipstick. It doesn't wick up the dipstick. The S55 version that I've seen online, it doesn't have that big tube. And of course, a factory dipstick actually pokes down into the sump. So it won't have that wicking issue. Anyway, Dan gets around it by using this tube. Um, something just to note as well, this is the version for the E46. The one that we make for the E9X, E8X chassis will be slightly different. However, You've made a few of these over the years, and there's a few race cars getting around there with N54s in your other versions. You've gone to a billet one? Uh, yep. This is just so it's easier to replicate, so we can put this kit together, make sure it fits E82s, E92s, E90s, and then sell them to people who want to get rid of their electronic dipstick. It's almost like he's in business. Guys, let me know if you think that's something you'd want to run on your M54. When Dan installs these on custom cars, he does have to make a small modification in the custom map, but then the ECU doesn't freak out that the original sensor is gone and you can check your oil like a man. Let me know below if you want to buy them. There are versions out there for the S55s that are quite expensive from what I've seen, sort of upwards of nearly 600 pounds is the cheapest one I've seen. I've seen some that are nearly two grand. Haven't seen any that you can buy for N54s. Let me know if you're interested in them, and that will basically give Dan an idea on how many he should start pumping out of his CNC machine. Uh, what's next on this, Dan? Um, we are now going to put the sensor on the clutch pedal and build the contraption, the first uh, iteration, I guess, of it to try and make the clutch pedal feel like a clutch pedal. So if you haven't seen the other videos, we're putting the ZF8 or the 8HP70 transmission into this E46. Now I have done a couple of these conversions. I've done one HP70 and one HP45, both into N54 cars. And the great thing about these modern eight-speed gearboxes, and to be honest, they're used by a lot of manufacturers. It's the same transmission that's in the Dodge Demon, the Dodge Hellcat. Uh, um, Volkswagen use them, BMW use them on the new M3s, M5s, X5s, anything that's going fast seems to use these transmissions. And yes, they are an automatic transmission. They will change gears smooth and quiet and 
lovely like a Rolls Royce. The Rolls Royce use these transmissions, or you can actually set them up to smash through the gears like a sequential, which is what we're trying to go for with this drift setup. It's going to have different modes so that we can still drive it on the street, and we have driven it on the street. Go back and check the previous videos, and it's quite smooth, it's quite nice, but now we want to turn it up. The other thing that we need it to do is really emulate the clutch pedal. So this kit is actually from Turbo Lamic and it's a full kit and he's actually got it set up and there's programming options within the software to run a clutch pedal. The 8HP has five electronic clutches, sorry, they're hydraulic clutches, but you control them electronically through solenoids. And obviously being able to disengage all of those clutches at once, including the torque converter, you, can, you should, according to the theory, you should be able to actually operate it like a manual gearbox. You'll be able to push the clutch down and then bring the revs up and actually take up like a manual see if it works. I've not seen anyone or spoken to anyone directly that's using this in a drift application, but I have a feeling they're out there. There are a few turbo Lamic drift cars out there. We're going to see if we can make it work. Now, the clutch pedal input on a turbo Lamic is just zero to five volts, so we needed a sensor, and that's where this comes in. Now, this is a Haltech sensor, and to be honest, it was just one of the cheapest places to get it. It is a linear potentiometer. Where's Dan? I need Dan. Okay, the man is back. We've got Dan. Now, is it a linear? What, what is this sensor? Uh, it's a linear potentiometer. This one's made by Haltech. And you did say you got it from Haltech because it's just one of the cheapest you could get your hands on. It really was. And you got it the next day. Yep. So we did ask the audience about a few ideas on how to do this. Dan did have, I'm going to tell him, you had a HTG setup that just wasn't quite up to spec. And you did have a sensor on that as well. You've gone for this style of sensor because it's going to be easier to mount to the pedal? Um, yes, the other one was a, it was like a TPS with a wheel on it and then a, um, like a string that went from the wheel to another pulley then to the pedal and it kept slipping. Who would have thought? Yeah, So this is very good. going to be a bit of a cleaner setup uh, and that's going to go to the Lamic and tell the Lamic when to disengage the clutch packs. Now the problem that we're going to have here is that doesn't have any resistance on it. So if you're smashing that with your left foot while you're doing a power slide at 150 k's an hour, it's not going to feel like a clutch. So what we've done, why don't we, what these guys have done, uh, they have, the car has still got the manual, I'm going to get it wrong. It's got the clutch slave cylinder. It's still in it. The manual oh, master. Clu master, master cylinder. Master cylinder. Well, the slave cylinder is still in there as well. No, slave cylinder is on the floor because we broke it. Okay, well, it was in there. Okay, so we're going to use the original manual master cylinder from the original clutch the original clutch pedal we're going to connect it to a concentric slave yep. cylinder quarter master concentric slave what dan just said and then we're going to join it to this little setup which i'll go and show you that brock's working on there's young brock always playing with a lever what are you machining uh we're gonna attempt to make a clutch pedal feel like it works properly all right so i'm making a bit of a jigger to do that Okay, so Brock's actually finished on the lathe. I didn't film, I stopped filming there because it was quite loud. But we've got the main components put together. Now something, I can't remember if I mentioned earlier, but the idea of this is to make this electronic clutch feel like a traditional clutch with a, I wouldn't say flex plate, not flex plate. Pressure plate? A pressure plate. I'm so good with wordings. <laughs> and obviously with a pressure plate, the resistance that you get on the pedal, it sort of starts off hard and then you get like a an ease point where it gets easier to push it in at a certain point. Now that ease point is normally the bite point of the clutch but we're going to see how we go here but we wanted to try and get something with that progressive hump and then ease off thanks to christian von Koenigsegg. if you've seen his videos it's pretty cool he's doing a similar thing just with a bit more money um, so this is literally just stuff that these guys had laying around uh this is a concentric slave cylinder off a dog box yeah off a jericho four speed so a serious bit of kit. Now, it's just what these guys had spare. You can get smaller ones and probably would use a smaller one if the option was there, but we're gonna prototype with this and see how it goes. Um, this is the, is that still hot? No, it should be good. This is the main part. So these are the springs. What are those springs called, Brock? Uh, Belleville, Belleville disc springs, they are. Yeah, I'm familiar with that. Heard about it heaps of times. <laughs> Definitely not, but obviously they're quite thick plates of steel that we're gonna bend and twist into place and hopefully give us that pressure plate feel. We'll know, we'll know shortly maybe. Um, and then you basically machine up a few things to hold it all together because there's gonna be a tremendous amount of force going through this, which is why it's got 20 mil rod. Actually, yep. do you wanna, make, I suppose you start putting it together It'll and that'll, together. that'll show them how it's gonna work. You've got the base plate, then the slave cylinder goes on. 
that's what we've been machining in the lathe just before. And the springs go all over that. You get that piece. And that there. And then I guess you'll just bolt it all together. Okay. And I'm going to be honest, we're not going to take full credit for this. Somebody who does racing sims actually helped us with this and they actually supplied it the spring. So hopefully this works. Hopefully it doesn't feel like a Hyundai Excel, but even if it does, it'll work. That's right. So that's it. Now, Brock did say he might add some welds just to keep it all together and perfectly aligned with these two pieces or that piece yeah, and that piece. Some, yeah. But for testing, we can bleed it up and try it. And give it a crack. Well, let's go and see if we can fit it on the car somewhere. I mean, this does look quite big. But I guess it's going to feel like a clutch. All right, let's get it on the car. All right. Oh. Can you undo half of what you just did? So it's now too stiff. No, it's a little bit stiff. It's nice that we've got some sweet adjustment in it. <laughs> All right. Try that. Yep. Holy shit. If we put this in the cabin, you can adjust it on the fly. <laughs> <laughs> How does that feel? It feels good. That's good. What would you liken it to? What car? S15. Feels like your S15. <laughs> that good? Unclutch. Shit. Well, I gotta have a feel. Yeah, it's not squeaking anymore. How's it feel, Dan? Yeah, it feels fine. Feels like a clutch? Yeah, we can make that work. Sweet. Phase one complete. We're getting there. Guys, you will have noticed that the original design didn't quite work. The Bellyville or whatever, Belleville springs, they were just too stiff. It felt like an old school upgraded clutch, a cable clutch, which is just not what we want. We've gone to two valve springs uh, with a certain amount of preload on them. Dan's happy with it. So, okay, so a bit of an update. There's a lot of stuff going on in the background, but since we're not using these Bellyville or Bellville, whatever they are, springs, we're going down to a valve spring. We're gonna try a smaller slave cylinder. Uh, I know we could get rid of this spacer, which was again for the big ones, but we'll try and get this whole diameter down and then we might be able to even fit it up in here. Brock is currently working on the CNC thingy machine. What are you doing, Brock? Um, I'm going to make a, a similar setup to what we have over there based on the OE N54 uh, slave cylinder. Ah, right. Make okay. it a bit smaller, a bit more compact so we can fit it nicely in the car somewhere. I like it. And these are going to be a lot more readily available than basically yeah, NASCAR awesome. car slave cylinders what we're using over there. All right. I'll, I'll update you when he's designed it. So Brock has come up with a design to make it all work on a stock N54 master cylinder. So this will bolt onto here. Yep. As such. And then this will be our push rod inside the master cylinder. So that's going to locate in that ball. Yep. Right. Then on this side we'll have this pair of valve springs like, like that. that. With that being pushed up against the top of the other piece. Into the center up here. Cool. Right. Well, that looks like a pretty solid solution. You happy with that, Dan? It's going to be way more compact. We know that these springs work well enough to feel like a clutch with what we've got in the car. Um, you've just got to print it on that thing. Yeah, let's make it happen. All right, we're going to end this video off here. The next video is going to be the car on the dyno. Seeing how this works, checking the bite point, seeing if we can make some power, see how the Lamic and the AHP holds the power, and see if we can get it ready to drift. Yay. <laughs> okay, we've got, to, we've got to end it with a bit more excitement. <laughs> These guys, they're not YouTubers. So I will end it off there. I just want to say to everyone, if anybody's interested in those dipsticks, do comment below because we kind of want to get an idea on if it's worth making 10, 50, 100 of them. Again, this tube's going to be different on the E9X cars. But I think that's a pretty cool solution, especially if you're making decent power, doing frequent oil chains. You want to be able to check the oil on the side of the track just quickly between runs. It's a no-brainer. Let's end it off there. I'm looking forward to seeing what this thing does on the dyno. We will catch you in the next video. Thank you all for watching.